Hi there, and welcome to part two of our already uh, created video of misconceptions when studying in the US as an international student. And today we're going to be tackling three different misconceptions that we believe uh, a lot of our international students have about what it means to be a student in the US compared to what they already have as preconceived notions of being a student, a university student in their home country. So let's tackle these three misconceptions of what it means to study in the United States. Starting with number one, we're going to look at the title, Career Services and Counseling. And what does this mean? What is this misconception around career services or counseling? And it actually means, uh, or what we try to, to, to share with you today, is the idea of something that's not existent in Europe or limited at best, but something that has always thrived in the US system, something that has always been present and available. And that is the concept of the university being a product, being a service provider to its um, client, the student. So there are a lot of different ways the university tries to help their students. They try to give them guidance. They try to give them a student experience, as we mentioned before, with the campus experience. Uh, they try to give them access to, to the professors, as we'll see in a minute. But they also try to give you a better future. The better your future is, the better you look and the better that looks on the university. So it's always, always in their best interest to keep you happy, but to keep you successful. And that's why they have career services to help give you guidance on what you can do to improve your uh, profile as a student, how to maybe uh, look at specific classes to, to make your, your curriculum stand out, how to write a perfect resume or CV. Uh, they even have sessions on, on essay writing to make sure that your essays are coming out as well as possible. Uh, with your English as an international student. They have different um, interview uh, preparations for when you do go to job fairs and look into possible employment opportunities. They also have counseling sessions, whether it's mental counseling to make sure that you're staying mentally healthy, but also counseling around uh, if you're looking to maybe change your major, if you're having doubts about yourself and your future, you will have different student counselors to reach out to. Point number two, we want to title it professor engagement. And I always like to talk about this. It's something that definitely puts the US apart from many other educational systems in this in this world. Um, and that is the, the way that professors try to interact with their students, the way the professors are engaged in the classroom. Um, it's also about the formatting of those classes. On the one hand, you might have huge auditoriums filled with 200, 300, 400 students, all to watch what's called a lecture. And the lecture is a broad uh, presentation of a topic uh, and giving you perhaps the main details around that. It's a, it's a, uh, a, a you know, sucking in all that and, 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 and trying to take in all that information coming from an expert of that area. But then you break down those 200, 300, 400 students break down into small sessions uh, typically one or two times a week and they have discussions, they have debates around that broad topic and start narrowing down those different theories, those different ideas, uh, maybe contradicting opinions, uh, what interpretations you might have versus your peer. And that's where the professor uh, in the classroom will give you guidance, they'll give you ideas, they'll learn from you too. Uh, they'll create networking opportunities. A lot of times, uh, specifically in science-related um, uh, majors, there is research being, being done. You're talking, you're debating about a live topic. And if your ideas are getting proven, if your ideas are noteworthy, you might be invited to participate in that research. You might be given even a scholarship to help as a research assistant. That's not uncommon. So the concept of a professor being engaged with the students, with almost as a mentor in many of these cases, 
is definitely not only realistic and happening, but it's always juxtaposed with the professor experience, at least from what I hear from the students that I've worked with coming from Europe or coming from other countries where the professor perhaps is there to to give information and to relay information and to make sure the student um, soaks in as much as possible but isn't on top of the student perhaps as much isn't as engaged uh, with the student as much as as they are in the US so that's definitely a, a big misconception for many many students now the last misconception, misconception number three, would have to revolve around the work opportunities. And I love to talk about this because it goes to show that the university is really invested in making sure that you don't quit. They want you to stay. Remember, it's almost like a business. They want you to be a solidified client. They want you to be there for the long haul, not just sporadically. So they're going to try to incentivize you in different ways to keep you on the campus. And that's coming from a multitude of ways. We've mentioned career services. We've mentioned counseling. We've, we've mentioned you know professor engagement. We've also men mentioned in the previous video how you can have um, you know student uh, events or uh, you know university-led activities that they want to keep you satisfied and happy. And the last way they can do that is by giving you money. Now, obviously, as an international student, you're only allowed to work. 20 hours per week and on campus. You cannot work off campus, but having that opportunity, they want to make that happen. And many, many universities have specific people in charge to find, locate, and attract different employment opportunities on campus for any international student that is willing to work. That's one great way of saving a lot of money. But is that the only way to save money? No. Whenever there are no classes then on campus, spring break, Christmas break, summer break, you are allowed to work 40 hours on campus. So that means you can actually save a lot of money if you do pursue any type of, of you know, job off uh, the, the calendar of classes because you can work double the time. Not only that, if you want to pursue an OPT or an optional practice training, um, uh, extension on your visa, you can stay in the US for one year working and earning a salary of your earning bracket. So that means you could save a lot of money in just one year. If you are STEM designated, that program is connected to science, technology, engineering, or math, that OPT can be extended two more years, making a total of three years of possible work in the US. So there are a multitude of, of ways to reduce your costs apart from uh, any type of scholarship, any type of assistantship uh, within the research area or the department um, that is needed with your help. There are so many ways to reduce your costs that it just makes studying in the US so much more entertaining or fun or looking, you know, looking to, to grow personally and grow um, educationally but without losing sight of the economy of your finances and trying to make that happen is always a key component of studying in the US. So if you want to learn more about these topics, if you want me to, to give you more insights and more knowledge, then feel free to reach out for a free consultation with EPRO360. Uh, and thank you very much for watching this video.